No Snatcher, no Popful Mail, no Lunar 1 and 2, but we are getting some pretty neat games with the Genesis Mini 2. Sega just announced the entire list of all the games that are going to come on the Genesis Mini 2, that's our US version, and I'll rank them along the way, why not? Do me a huge solid, make sure you're subscribed so I can do more videos like this. Starting with the Sega CD games that we'll get on this collection, we have the Sega CD version of Echo the Dolphin. Now if you're familiar with Echo the Dolphin, well the CD version, I don't know if there's a difference outside of the sound or something? I mean, I've played them both briefly, and I can't tell you a difference between one or the other. But I guess if you have the option, may as well go with the Sega CD version for Echo the Dolphin. And same goes for Echo Tides of Time. This is basically Echo 2. More of the same when you're swimming around as a dolphin, you can kind of communicate with the uh, Echo location stuff. Makes sense that they would add these. Fun that they added these. I'll give them both a C right down the middle. I'm kind of unopinionated on both of these games. Super excited they're adding Final Fight CD to this collection. Especially if you came to this from the Super Nintendo days, this features Guy. It features all three characters as it does in the arcade game. And maybe to me the most faithful port to the arcade game? Just how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels. I was a huge fan of Final Fight back then. I go back to play it now, it's a little generic. I mean, it kind of paved the way for a lot of games like this. There's other games I would rather play, but it's still fun to go back in the past and yeah, check out Final Fight. And never mind that you can play as Guy on this one, I always play as Hagger. I'll give it a B, it's fine. Yeah, we got Night Trap, that's right. I was curious to know if they were actually going to bother adding Night Trap to this collection, and they did. I'm glad they did, however, it's not great. <laughs> I mean, it's it's legendary. It's iconic. It's the game that gave us the ratings and stuff like that. And if you don't know how to play this game, I you know it's funny. I can play it better on like the PlayStation Four since they released it for that. Uh, the Switch as well. But you go back to play the Sega CD version. I'm like, I don't remember what's the buttons do and which buttons does what. You're know, trying to capture the guys and stuff. Still very cool. They added this. I'm glad they did. I'll give it a C just out of like it's not a great game, but fun to see it on here. Robo, is it Alesta? Alesti? I never actually said it out loud. Robo Alest? Either way. Uh, fun vertical shooter. It's just a, it's a vertical shooter, but you play as this robot and a bunch of stuff on screen and shoot the other things out of the way. It is a vertical shooter, no matter which way you spin it. <laughs> and, it's, and it is a fine one at that. And I'll give this game a B. Yeah, I'm not waiting for it. I'm gonna just keep going here. Sewer Sharks. Now, Sewer Shark was the pack-in for your Sega CD, it makes sense that they would add this. I'm curious to know why they waited so long. Little full motion video style, it's an on-rail shooter. Like, like quite literally, I mean, you just move your cursor to shoot the uh, shoot the things out of the way. And they tell you which tunnels to go through. Now there's gonna be other tunnels that pop up, but you have to go through the tunnels that they tell you in that order to uh, advance in this game. I had a lot of fun with this game. Even though it's kind of cheesy, as, as it's supposed to be for an uh, early full motion video game, there's still some fun to be had with this game, but I still, I'll still give it a C at least. Moving on to the Sega Genesis games, Atomic Runner makes this list. Now I'm familiar with this game a lot. Uh, I've seen this game before on other platforms and consoles. I never had a chance to rent this game or anything for the Sega Genesis. Uh, my store didn't have it that I know of. But you're constantly running, that's why it's called Atomic Runner, is you're constantly moving, constantly running. It is a one hit kill on this one and you can shoot in direction and jump and then the other button kind of flips you around, which is kind of confusing. Because if you pull back, you don't just turn around, you just stop running. So confusing controls aside, I mean, a lot of people really care for this game. I don't. And maybe it's because it's too hard for me. I'm giving it a D. That's me. Clay Fighters makes this list, which is nice because with a six button controller, you'd want some fighting games on here. Now, Clay Fighters, like Street Fighter 2, has the weak, medium, and strong punch, and then you hit start, and then it turns into the weak, medium, strong kick. But with a six button controller, you should be okay. Clay Fighter was during a time when a lot of games, I say a lot of games, some games were using uh, uh, clay sculptures that they would like screen cap and that would be the graphics of the game, which I thought was kind of a fun idea. Something unique, something different a little bit. It was a fun fighting game. It was during a time where there were so many Street Fighter 2 clones, but this one stood out just a bit to make it be a little bit different and yeah, it kind of fun. Still though, it's only kind of fun. I'll give it a C. Crusader of Sinti makes this list. Now, we didn't get Popful Mail, we didn't get Snatcher, we didn't get this, that, and the other, but we did get Crusader of Sinti. This is the most expensive game, if you're into collecting, that you can get for the Sega Genesis. Just this game alone sells the system. And no reason why not, it's actually a very, very, very fun game. This is your Legend of Zelda style game 
for the Sega Genesis. It was a late release, so not a lot of people played it, not a lot of people knew about it, not a lot of people got into it until later, or they heard about it, or they got into collecting. They're like, what's this game? I've never heard of this. Why is it going for so much money? It is a fantastic Zelda-style game. I mean, like, it's really, really good. The colors are great, the sound's great, music's kind of fun. No issues, no complaints. Well, maybe the fact that it's a little on the easy side. It is a little on the easy side, but if you're just looking for a fun adventure and you haven't played this one yet, Crusader Ascenti, so happy it is on this collection. I'm giving this game an S. We're getting a Desert Strike game, and this was during a time, unless you are from the time, you have no idea how many Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, there are so many of these strike games that were available on like just about every console you could imagine for the time. And they were fun. They were a great rental. Um, it was fun just to kind of fly around and I mean it was during the whole you know like like you know Gulf War stuff like that. Uh, it was during, you just go around and you cause <laughs> craters in the land by blowing up buildings and people and stuff like that. Big maps to explore it on this one. These were kind of fun. I mean it, it's fun to see this one. I'll give it a B. Well, I was hoping for Earthworm Jim on the Sega CD. We didn't get that, but we did get Earthworm Jim 2 for the Sega Genesis. And this one's a fun one. I still prefer the first one better, just because you know, it's the first one. But, you know, Earthworm Jim 2 uh, it brings the silliness and the wackiness and the platforminess and the run-and-gun style uh, that are fun with the, uh, the Earthworm Jim games and the comedy and everything. Plays very well on the Sega Genesis, so happy that they are including this in here. I'll give it an A. Elemental Master from Renovation. Renovation makes some great, great game. And Elemental Master, well, it plays more like a vertical shooter that you happen to be just going around and shooting stuff. Now, you can shoot forward. You can also shoot behind you if needed. It's a nice difficulty level where, yeah, I mean, you might die a few times the first few times you play it, but you know, once you get in the habit of things, you, you might do a lot better. I guess that could be said for literally every game. <laughs> this one's a fun one, though. I'll give it a B. Fatal Fury 2 makes this collection as well. I played a lot of Fatal Fury 2 for the Super Nintendo. I uh, didn't really play it for the Sega Genesis, but it plays, you know, basically the same anyway. The earlier Fatal Fury games were unique in that it had two levels. There was like a foreground and a background. They can kind of jump back and forth between. It was not needed. It was just a gimmick that they added to it. Um, I mean, I think the games would have been just as fun, maybe even more fun, if it didn't include it. But they're trying for something different. And the fact that you can play as Bootleg Vader, I'm okay with that with this game. Still kind of a fun game. I'll give it a B. Game Ground was a game I had a lot of fun with. It's a single screen arcade style game, but you have to make it through to the exit and you have multiple people that you have to get through to the exit. Each player has their own style of shooting or uh, they can lob a weapon or something like that. And you can also pick up other characters to join your party through these stages as well. All you have to do is just make it to the end. And if you don't make it to the end, well, then you're kind of captured, I guess is the, 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 the word, the phrase. You no longer exist in your party. <laughs> <laughs> but the people that you did pick up and make it through the exit uh, are now playable. I do like this game quite a bit. I'll give it a B. Golden Axe 2, is it better than Golden Axe 1? Well, I mean, if you look at it game for game, yeah, I think I like this game better than Golden Axe 1. Of course, Golden Axe 1 has more of the nostalgia factor, but this one took everything that was awesome about Golden Axe and, you know, just tweaked it enough to just make it better. It plays better. It just, it just feels better, this game does, to me, anyway. Uh, compared to Golden Axe, uh, the first one. But still, same idea as Golden Axe, and still a lot of fun. I'll give it a B. Hellfire, one of the Toplin shooters here. This is a horizontal shooter. And what makes this unique is your different guns shoot in different directions. Now, you can shoot forward, or you can shoot backward, or up and down, or at diagonals and stuff like that. And you just kind of cycle through them for how you need to complete this stage, or these stages. Fun to see Hellfire on there. A little bit more of a skier of a shooter for the Sega Genesis, but hey, after this comes out, maybe not so obscure anymore. I'm cool with that. I'll give it a B. Early, when I first started getting into Sega Genesis, everyone was talking about Herzog's Vi, and Herzog's Vi is a game that you need the instruction manual to play. You cannot just pick up and play it. I've talked about this game on my channel a few times. Uh, you, you at least look up a little YouTube tutorial or some kind of like playthrough, so you say, oh, okay, that's, that's exactly what you do. Because it's more than just killing the other guy. You have to uh, invade the other bases, grow your troops, uh, you know, um, make sure that you, I don't know, there's there's so much going on with this game that makes it almost a little bit of a strategy, but still all of the hands-on action that I love about video games too. Very unique. I haven't really seen a game like this, I think, since this. 
that has this kind of ability. And maybe there is, and if there is, let me know in the comments for sure. I'm doing terrible in this playthrough, I'm just kind of playing around with it anyway when I'm capturing this footage. But yeah, trust me, Herzog's Vi, very, very cool. Giving it an A. Midnight Resistance. Well, Midnight Resistance from Data East is basically your Great Harvest Contra. This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to look at it anyway. It's a run and jump. It's a it's a run and gun style game. You can get your weapons and shoot them and it's it's just if you like Contra, it's a choppy version of Contra. And it's fine. It's B. Fantasy Star 2 is the role-playing game that you had for the Sega Genesis. If you had the NES at the time, well, you had Dragon Warrior, you had Final Fantasy, but you did not have Fantasy Star 2. That was a Sega exclusive. I'm giving this game an A. I'm not going to show you gameplay footage because it takes a while to get into it. Ranger X is a game that a lot of people really, really like, and I really, really never know what I'm doing in this game. <laughs> it's just, this game is just full, so full of chaos. Uh, what I love about it is there's so many moving sprites on screen. Looks really, really cool. And I have no clue what are... I mean, it's like there's so many... There's so much happening. on this. You can shoot one direction. You can shoot the other direction uh, as you're pivoting around, as you're moving around. Super, super fast action on this one. So much is going on. Like I said, a lot of people love this game. For me, even I wish it would slow down a little bit to let me breathe for a second so I can see <laughs> where I'm going or what I'm trying to do here as I'm, you know, trying to defeat all these enemies and stuff like that. Fun to see on this game. I'll also give it a B. Ristar, or Ristar, whatever you want to call it, could have been the Sega Genesis mascot. It could have been the Sega mascot had this have come out before Sonic the Hedgehog, but it came out late release. It was like 1995. It was like right around when the PlayStation came out. But this game is so good, so colorful. I mean, if you love that Sonic the Hedgehog style, this was that, only it wasn't Sonic the Hedgehog. I could see this character just becoming one with the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. I think it really should, because I'd love to see more games um, and, you know, more collaborations like this with Sonic. You don't run like Sonic. You kind of take your time, you stroll, but you have, like, these arms you can reach out, and you can grab enemies as a headbutt them, you can grab onto things. That's kind of how you maneuver around and everything like that, too. Super fun game, giving this game an A. Shadow Dancer, a favorite of many who love the Shinobi games because you have a dog. That's right. Just like the other Shinobi games, you can sh throw your shurikens, you can slash your sword, you got your little magics and stuff like that too. But you also have a dog, and when you charge up that dog meter, uh, the dog will kind of attack the enemy to hold them still so you can attack them and everything like that. Loved that about this game. Giving this game an A for sure. Streets of Rage 3, well, coming out of Streets of Rage 2, it was hard to top that. And this game, well, as much as I still prefer Streets of Rage 2, very, very fun. I do like, I, I'll take Streets of Rage 3 over Final Fight CD. How about that? Uh, this game gets an A for sure. We have Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. This is where they still had Street Fighter 2, but it introduces uh, some new characters you can play as, including Cammy. Cammy made their appearance in this one for the first time, and, you know, a couple others as well. I'm playing as Fei Long here. Um, and like, again, having that six button controller is gonna make a world of difference uh, when you're playing this, as opposed to how I'm playing it currently. I'm playing this on a three button. <laughs> so I have to hit the start button to pass between a punch and kick. Can't imagine anybody doing that for too long of a time. This is going to be awesome on the uh, on, on the six button controller on your Genesis Mini 2. Can't wait to see it. And Super Street Fighter 2, I mean Street Fighter 2 is always an S tier game all day long. Um, I, I mean I guess I should give this game an S as well because it's Street Fighter 2 and it plays awesome. Toe Jam and Earl, Panic on Funkatron. Well we didn't get Toe Jam and Earl but we are getting Toe Jam and Earl. Panic on Funkatron. You can play as two players simultaneous or just one or the other. Has anyone ever made the reference that this is a little bit like Spongebob and Patrick? Probably not. Wacky, crazy, zany, the sounds, the music, it was all about the groove, the beat, the, the something. <laughs> it was, they're, they're looking for new mascots and, I mean, why not with uh, Toe Jam and Earl? Sure thing. Although, I never, uh, the first one was kind of fun. I never really cared for this side-scrolling one, though. I'll give it a C. Truxton. A lot of people love them some Truxton. And it is a fine shooter. No reason why not. It's it's fun. It's fine. It's fun and it's fine. It's a B. Viewpoint. Curious to see this on this Genesis collection. Now, I played this mostly, believe it or not, on my PlayStation 1. Came out originally for the Neo Geo, I believe, though. It's that Zaxxon isometric style shooting game. So instead of it just being a vertical shooter or horizontal shooter, it is a diagonal shooter. Yeah, it makes it up a little bit. Little touch of R-Type in there as well, where you can shoot your gun or you can charge it up to shoot a more powerful shot. You have different kinds of crashes that, you know, destroy enemies on screen and stuff like that, too. It's, I mean, it's all right. It's, it's, it's worth checking out. It's a C. 
Warsong was a game that looked super confusing when I saw this at the rental store. Um, didn't really look into it too much, but it, it does play like one of those strategy games, and I loved the Shining Force games. So this one plays a little bit like that, but also has that touch of, it maybe plays a little bit more like Military Madness on the TurboGrafx-16. So if you're a big fan of that, like Advanced Wars style game, where it's just, you know, once you kind of maneuver your troops and everything, and then you fight it out, and just the computer fights it out for you and everything based on the stats that are going on, not bad. Cool to see that they would have a game like this on your Genesis Mini 2. I'll give it a B. And then the specialty games that they added, now you know, again, they have like, you know, like the Fantasy Zone that never came out and stuff like that. They're adding Splatter. Now Splatter was an arcade game, I guess, and it looks kind of fun. I mean, I'm down to check that out. I can't give it a grade because I haven't played it yet. And that's the same for Super Locomotive. I guess we're going to see how that plays uh, when it comes around. Is it Devi and Pi? Devi and P? I'm not exactly sure. It's like Devil and Angel kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, looks interesting, though. I'm, I'm curious to check that out. Versus Puyo Puyo Sun. Love the Puyo games, so more Puyo is always good news for me. And I would have never thought about this, but they're adding Space Harrier 2 as if it wasn't running at 10 frames a second. I mean, because if you're, if you're familiar with Space Harrier 2 for the Genesis, does not run great. It's fun, doesn't run great. This one makes it look super smooth, super awesome. So definitely down to check that one out as well. And I covered all of the other games in my previous video, so make sure you check that out. Got your pre-orders linked in the description below. And as soon as I get my hands on this, I'm going to be doing a whole lot of streaming on Twitch using this device specifically. So we'll have to have you join me there as well.